In this video, I'm going to be talking about why you should not fire your outsourced staff during this crisis. Well, what a complete mess the start of 2020 has turned out to become so far. Economy's in meltdown, everybody's in lockdown, we're all working from home all of a sudden, and wow, you're like, this is unbelievable. How am I meant to get business done? How am I meant to pay for things during all the craziness going on? Now, hopefully, you have a business where you have some reserves, where you've kept some money aside for this extremely rainy day. In fact, like this is a hurricane. <laughs> this is not just a rainy day. Hopefully you have kept some money aside. Now, one of the natural things to do in any business during this kind of crisis or any kind of crisis is to cut costs, try and see where you can save money and so on. And one of the things you may be looking at is, well, do I really need my outsourced staff? Now, if you're asking the question, do I really need them? Then you probably haven't been getting them to do work and getting to do stuff that could actually add value to your company to allow you to work on it instead of in it. If that's the case, you really need to evaluate that ASAP before you decide to fire the employee because at the end of the day, they're in lockdown too. They're suffering the same crisis. They've got the same things that are going on. They have to feed their family. They have to get things done just like you. So, you know, I would say to you, think about it before you decide to sack someone, try and see what you can do with regards to continuing to work with them because this crisis will go, every crisis eventually goes and what you don't want to be in the position of is getting rid of your good workers who you then can't hire back because they've got a job with someone else. So what I would suggest is that you take a look at you know, obviously take a look at your finances, take a look at what grants or what loans or what money's available from the government in your country if they've given such things. So I'm in Spain, they've given some stuff towards workers, but not very much towards self-employed and towards businesses. The UK has done a much better job. Not everybody covered. I know small directors are having a bit of an issue, especially ones who have taken small wage and dividend payments. They are not covered at all in the UK. But the majority of businesses do have some sort of coverage where you can furlough employees. Now, that's only in the UK, that's only for employees who are UK based employees, not for outsourced staff. But maybe there's some legroom for you to do, put some people on for a little while. Maybe there's a loan that's a government backed loan that you can get hold of that we can see you through the crisis. If you, like me, I've got an office in Glasgow in Scotland. So, we're able to claim a grant based on the fact that we've got a rateable office and that we have been renting out that office for quite some time now and the government is giving every business £10,000 towards their running costs and so on so you can keep your office. So what we've done is we sent all of our staff who are office-based home with laptops and phones and one of the really interesting things is that because we were working online with Filipino staff and we have lots of systems in place for working from home, directors from the company work from home so you know it's nothing new to us but one of the good things is that some of the systems and processes that were put in place for the Filipino staff and even by the Filipino staff has allowed our workers from the office who are now finding themselves working from home, they're able to actually go through all that documentation and get stuff done. So that's been a pretty good thing. As I say, the Filipino staff, they're all working from home. And if you've got any Filipino staff or are thinking about any Filipino staff, they'll be working from home too. So the lockdown won't affect them as badly. It's not like they have to go to an office and so on. And right now, everybody's going to be really grateful for any work that they can get. So try and explore all avenues. Don't sack your staff yet. Maybe if it's a case of like you don't have enough money coming in and so on and you have to say to them, look, I can't pay you the full amount just now. Talk to them, let them know what's going on. Speak to them about their basic needs and stuff like that. You know, like what their rent is, what their electricity needs and so on are and see if you could come up with a deal where maybe, I don't know, they're working for you part time for a lesser wage 
or something along those lines, that may be something that will see you through because remember this crisis will be over at some stage and you want to be in a position to be ready to get new clients and you know get the old clients back, get new clients and maybe even get clients from companies that did go to the wall because they had nothing in place and didn't do anything at all during this time. There is going to be less work for people to do. So during that time, you want to build on your systems. You want to fix up things, get processes sorted, get things ready and so on. So you become a meaner fighting machine, as they say. But yeah, it would really help me if your business, if you can actually start looking at all these things, instead of just sitting at home watching Netflix or going, oh my goodness me, what am I going to do? Panics, you know, panic should be over. If you're still in panic mode, get out of your system, do something, you know, like I know you if you're in lockdown, you're not probably going to be able to go out and do very much. But in the house, if it's watch a film, you know, spend a bit of time reading books, playing games, whatever it is that gets you to get into that place where, like, okay, I've panicked, I've had my break, now let's get myself into work and use your Filipino staff or any of your outsource staff to actually get stuff done in this period. My plan for this period is to build on a couple of websites that we were going to be planning to do later on in the year. Now, because there's less work to do, we've decided to push them forward and get done sooner. So shortly, I shall be releasing two new businesses soon. I'll let you know about them once they're actually done. But yeah, so the plan is let's get them up. Let's get them ready. Let's get them in place. Let's get the SEO done. Let's get all the uh, things that we need to get in place for a new business. Let's get that done just now while there's not any clients and when people come back around and decide to start investing in their businesses or start spending money and so on again, then we'll be in a better position to actually service those people because we didn't just sit about going, oh, what will we do? What will we do? It's just, you have to get things done. So think about it like that. Think about it if you can afford it, obviously. If you can't and there's nothing you can do, then, you know, let your Filipino staff know, explain the situation, please pay them their final wage at least, you know, give them something because remember they've got family as well, they've got needs too, it's not just you, it would be good if you, you know, in a situation where you can't afford to pay them fully or continue to have them a job, at least pay them their final wage so that when it's over, if they're still available to work, if they haven't found another job, they'd be more interested in coming back to work for you because you actually treated them well as opposed to just disposing of them and getting rid of them. There is hope. There is light at the end of the tunnel. Let me know in the comments, you know, what's going on with your business. Is there something that you can do with Filipino staff that maybe in the short term can get work done for, you know, like you furloughed some, some of your staff, you get a cheaper Filipino member staff to allow you to continue to keep the business in place. So that way, when you get out of this crisis, when you rehire the staff fully from the furlough period and so on, that you've got a stronger business and that they've been helping you during that time to keep it running. Because at the end of the day, business, you know, it's not just about employing people from another country here. You are a company in your country who's providing tax revenue and so on to your country. And it's made from everything you do. Let's face it, the majority of the money that you pay on Filipino staff is very, very little compared to what actually is getting made for the company overall and for you too. So have a think about what you can actually do in this situation. Anyway, if you like this video, give it a like subscribe let your friends know about the channel more stuff going on i'll be uploading every week so yeah i'll see you all later bye